system. So, I don't want the copyright place to get me. Um, but this is an obsolete um, Canon PowerShot something or other, SX10IS, um, with this. So what is this, um, you are probably asking. This is a, um, well, you can kind of see um, what it is based on this. Um, it's a magnifying glass lens, basically, um, shoved inside the sun hood, the, uh, I guess called a sun hood, I don't know, I'm not a camera person, um, but shoved inside the sun hood, I'm just gonna call it, um, with some putty, um, and then around this is a ring light, which I will demonstrate for you guys in a moment, um, so why am I doing this all, you may ask? Um, you know, why, why would I stick a magnifying glass on an obsolete cannon um, and make a ring light? I mean, actually, I was just finishing taking off the shoulder strap. Um, so... And there is a screw in the tripod um, screw thing, because I'm going to use that later and I don't want to lose it, so I'm just keeping it there. Um, and it makes it so it doesn't completely rest on the plastic um, ring light that I made. And one of my LEDs is not the right color, um, but that's fine. So we're just going to hook this up to a current limited supply. Um, yeah. Let's turn on my bench power supply. Um, we're going to set it to 3 volts. And let's limit the current to... Um, ah, the UI on this is interesting. Um, 0.2 amps. So... We can turn you on. Um, and let's put this back on the camera, actually. Um, I'm going to need to find a more permanent way to supply this with power, um, because this is not a good long-term solution. Um, but you will see we have a ring light that completely swamps out the camera. Um, um, it's quite bright, um, and we can even step down the current a little more, um, which will give me more LED longevity. Um, this is only 0.1 amp, um, and this is actually probably about ideal because it's the voltage is dropping down to 2.8 volts, and it's drawing 0.07 amps, which is pretty much perfect. So you see, we have a ring light. Um, quite a good one, actually. Um, everything's diffused well, it creates a lot of light. Um, but I still haven't explained why I'm doing this. Um, so actually, shoot, do I not have the power adapter down here? I took all the batteries out of this camera to make it lighter, which is another clue. I don't know where I... I have a USB to a 2.1 millimeter power thing that I can plug into my bench power supply because I shoved a USB socket on there because that... Why would I not shove a USB socket on there that can output variable voltage um, and cause someone to fry their phone? Um, but I, I don't know where I shoved... No, I can just use this. This will work. Um, we can just use this with some alligator clips. Um, here we go. I should turn this off before, so you guys can actually see. Um, so here, we're going to put DC into the camera. And actually, I might edit, and this is how I'm going to use it in its final setup as well, with DC. And um, and I, again, it uses a weird voltage, so again, I'm going to have to find some way to power it. I think it says on the bottom it's like 7, yeah, 7 7.4 volts. Um, so I'm going to need like a buck converter or something just to get 7.4 volts. Um,
And current limiting wise, we'll limit it to what? We'll limit it to like two amps. Three amps. We'll give it three amps. Um, I want this back on because three amps is enough to spark, probably. I don't know for sure, but um, I'm guessing three amps would spark. There we go. Um, there we go. Um, so I might even just edit these on, but this is how I'm going to power the camera, not with my bench power supply, but using the DC in. Um, it is center positive from what I've seen online, but I don't know for sure, so we'll... Okay, it hasn't blown up, um, but 3 amps isn't enough because it's shut down. We'll give it 4 amps. Um, 4 amps is enough. So this camera actually draws a lot of power. Um, but if we flip out this screen and go to playback, um, you can't see anything. There we go, now you can see it. Um, you can see what I want this for. This is the Arduino uh, Nano here. And here's a shot of the, uh, which way it's facing in the shot, it's facing this way. All right, that matched up. No, that's matched up for me, but not for you. There we go. I think this is as close as I'm going to get for you guys. Um, so you can see we have an... Um, uh, that's not that clear. Here's another one of the Arduino. More of the Arduino. More of the Arduino. I don't even know what that is. Um, here's some of some curf board um, that the Arduino is on. Um, more perf board. Um, here's perf board with the Arduino pin sticking through it. So you can see, um, here's one of these little breakout boards for a uh, micro USB. Um, so you can see we get quite a lot of um, useful um, images in it. Here's a really unfocused one of the perf board. Um, while I was still messing around with getting this thing focused, you have to run it in manual mode. It, the autofocus doesn't like having a magnifying glass um, over it. Um, so, Um, what, I, what I want to do is I have a screen down here now um, that I'm looking at right now that is how I know what you guys can and can't see. Um, because before I was just kind of guessing the framing um, because the way the camera is set up, um, yeah, basically it, it's much better now. Um, and I can actually be like, um, oh yeah, you can't see things this far back and um, pull them in. Um, or I can frame it better. So um, it's not framed perfectly right now, um, but I can frame so most of the things I want in shot are in shot. Um, anyways. Um, so I have a screen down here now, um, and what I want to do is I have a cable, this is a composite um, to a 3.5 millimeter cable, going to the composite input on this display, um, because this is a 15 inch um, monitor I took out of a laptop and installed a driver board on that has um, HDMI in, which is what I'm using for the camera, but it also has composite in, which is what I will use for this, because this outputs composite. Um, so we can plug this in, and then, um, you can't see the screen obviously, but I could switch the input, um, and I have tested it, and this will output composite to the screen. And then what I'm 3D printing right now that you can maybe hear in the background, um, that I will actually go check on I, um, to see if it's worth pausing the video to go and show the 3D printer if I should just um, create a part two because I already want to edit in the photos from this um, so you can see how well it works. Um, I'm designing a stand based around 
Um, it's like those stands you have in the science labs, um, where they slide up and down a rod. Um, it's gonna be like that, and the camera is gonna go like this and slide up and down the rod. Um, Oh shoot, I didn't consider the ring light in the clearance. I don't know if my stand's even gonna have enough clearance. I might have to print another one. Um, but there's gonna be a clampy stand that I can, um, I'm probably gonna use wing nuts so I can clamp and unclamp it easily. Um, that's gonna allow the camera um, to um, slide up and down the rod in a controlled manner and there'll be a stand for the rod as well. Um, so if I want to do micro soldering, um, for example, with these micro USB things, so I wouldn't need the breakout board, um, and I could just use direct micro USB onto a board, um, then I could use this as a microscope for it. And the best part is, with the exception of the plastic for the 3D prints, um, and some buck and boost converters, likely to power everything, um, this isn't costing me anything. I've all, I had this linear rod, um... Yes, I know, I have a random linear rod, it's random, but, um, I do, um, for some reason. I don't even quite know why myself, um, but, hey, um, I have a linear rod. Um, I had this camera, um, it was sitting in a closet, um, I had the magnifying glass, I had the LEDs that I, um, so, th this is just, um, and, and I'm sure lots of other people just have random, um, this is basic, this is not even a DSLR, this is just, this is a high-end point-and-shoot, um, but I know, um, Dave from the EUV blog did this with a fairly high-end video camera, and he did basically the same thing, except he actually used a proper aperture instead of just a magnifying glass, and as you can see from the photos that I have edited in earlier, um, it actually works quite well with just a janky magnifying glass, um, shoved into a lens hood. I almost bought some apertures, um, some macro, um, they called them macro filters on AliExpress, um, that would just actually, like, mount to this camera where the lens hood mounted. So I'm like, actually, I'm just gonna use what I already have, um, and do it that way. Um... So basically, um, yeah, it's a really, um, cheap camera setup thingy, and it needs four amps, which means I actually need a decent bucket converter. I was just going to stick one of the little dinky ones that can fly an amp or two, um, on it, but no, it needs a decent bucket converter, <laughs> which is a shame, because I have a ton of those dinky ones. I mean, I can just use a dinky one for this, but... I'm probably current limiting resistors, um, and I need to find out what resistor value I need to limit this to, um, 0.1 amp at 3 volts. Um, yeah. But that is all, um, for now, because the 3D prints aren't finished. Um, and there will be a part two where I show the 3D prints. Um, thanks for watching, and bye. So, pardon the handheld video, but, um, this kind of needs to be shot from a perspective I can't normally shoot from, because this is the display that is normally, um, normally you can't see it, because normally you're mounted right up there. Um, right behind the display, but anyways, um, this is currently being powered off my bench power supply because it's not completely done yet, but I finished the stand, um, as you can see, um, and... 
you can see that it is working pretty well. Um, it says can't record because there's no SD card in there right now, but um, yeah, it's been running for about four minutes, um, as you can see from the counter there. It's trying to record video because otherwise it would go into auto sleep mode. Um, but you can see it works beautifully. Um, and instead of just having to point my phone at the screen like I am now, if I were to stick an SD card in this, I could even save, um, save video directly. And you can see it does shake a little when I shake the table. Um, it doesn't, the camera itself doesn't even visual. It, the camera itself isn't even visually shaking right now, but the f frame is, um, just because it's so magnified. Um, but it's really not that bad. The main problem is that, um, it's mirrored, which you can maybe see. Um, so I move my soldering iron one way, and it ends up moving another. Um, it ends up moving in the opposite direction. Which is not what we want. Um, but you can see how this would work from my grave soldering. Um, and how decent it would be. Like, this is actually quite a um, good zoom. I don't know about the base. The base might melt. The base is just PLA. Oh, I might have to put something over it to help protect it. Um, but... I mean, I just need to figure out how to unmirror this. I mean, what I might do is go into this monitor settings and see if I can mirror it, which I will need to pause the camera for. Um, but I just figured I will show you this. Um, and, you know, this is the stand. Um, it. The camera screws in with the tripod screw, and it also um, sits in at the bottom. There's grabs the camera like that. The Legos are just for spacing because I needed some spacers because there was a protruding part of the camera I didn't include in my design and I didn't feel like reprinting it. Um, I did have to reprint this base though. My original design for the base was horrible um, and really unstable. I mean, this one's not super stable, but it's usable. Um, but my other one was really bad. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to try to see if I can mirror this, and I'll be back in a moment. I thought this TV had at least a rotate and mirror function and stuff, but I can't seem to find it. Um, I'll spend a tiny bit more time on it later, and I don't think this camera has it either. So, for now, this is what I'm going to give you with, and it's useful to take shots of up-close things, but it's currently not useful for soldering work, which is a shame. Um... Because part of the reason I, uh, a big part of the reason I wanted this was for soldering work, because it's better than those cheap USB microscopes from eBay and AliExpress, because I have much more of a working distance. Um, you can see how much space I have to get my soldering iron in there. And yes, this is a pretty small soldering iron, but even a much bigger one. Um, you have a decent amount of room. Um... And it's composite, so lots of people complain about the video lag with those USB microscopes. Um, because it's over USB, and it's also very frame rate limited, and this being composite isn't um, nearly as bad frame rate limited wise. I'm running at, you know, pretty high frame rate. You can see how quick this goes. Um, so... Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to see if I can mirror this. Um, one moment. Well, I've already tried to mirror it, but yeah, for now it's just going to be this way. Um, and I'll update you if I can, but bye.